Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it? Or maybe you don't see it, but now you do. Uh, there's a little warning screen just in case, man. Don't forget, man, patreon.com is where you can catch any of the live streams. And uh, I'm tweaking. I'm going to edit that out. Patreon.com is where you can catch any of the things that we can't post on YouTube, including Premier League highlights, man. We watch it every week, man. Uh, I have a lot of fun with those. But anywho, Twitch.com is where you can catch the live streams, man. This is Season 5, Episode 21. Can't pay, we'll take it away. This is a terrible intro, but, you know, I feel like y'all got the gist of it. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Research from a leading campaigning organisation has revealed that 6.5 million households in the UK are struggling with debt. The total household debt has risen by over £350 billion in the last 10 years, with the average amount, including mortgages, predicted to exceed £86,000 in 2022. Seven AM. I was muted. Y'all knew what it read. I said I didn't even used to think trillion was a real number. My bad. Mm -hmm. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and colleague Ian Taylor are in Alderley Edge, a wealthy suburb of Manchester, to collect one of the biggest debts they've ever had to recover. A lot of money around there. Yeah. Found How much? As it stands at the moment is four hundred and six thousand two hundred and seventy-three pounds and thirty-nine pence. A half a million? Oh yeah, you're never getting this for me. Some balance, isn't it? The debt. Yeah, now some some uh. You get a portion of that, don't you? Does Mark and Karen owe the money to a builder after they failed to pay him for a house they commissioned, forcing him to sell it to right, a bank commission. at a loss? Imagine being in debt for that much. It really is on the end of the line now. He needs to make a payment. If not, then uh, we will be removing his goods. Everything has got to go. Here it is. With such a large sum of money owed, Stuart and Ian aren't sure how much they will be able to recover today. Two vehicles there. Won't even scratch the surface. But they must try and get as much as they can for the claimant in either cash or goods. All right, let's go. Let's go and have a chat. All right. He's waiting while we're trying to connect you. Yeah, no, they got it, though. They got a telephone gate. What the hell? That's his car there, isn't it? It ain't worth a half a million. Gonna give it one more lucky ring. Stuart has already tried to get this case resolved at the property once before. As a result, he has an order from the High Court that allows them to gain entry by force if necessary. Now that is a door knock. Hello, is anybody in? Hello, mate, you okay? You what, sorry? Right, okay. I'll try and give him a ring now. You got the by force writ? No. <laughs> Not peaceful, by force writ. Stuart gets Mark on the phone. Hello. Hi, Mark. Um, I'm currently at your property at the moment, sir. Um, yeah, I know. We, we, my, my son just told me. Yeah, we, we've got high court writ. So how is it you can make payments, sir? I can't. It's a ridiculous amount. I don't believe I owe it. So there's no way that you can make any sort of payment whatsoever? The most I've got is 5,000. It's not going to accept that. Maybe no. not enough. No. Um, 
no, 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 no. I've got literally five thousand pounds. That's it. It's not gonna be enough, Mark. I tell you what, right? Five thousand and a five hundred thousand dollar debt is like throwing throwing a cup of water into a five hundred gallon pool and expecting it to be okay. I'll do this. Have a look around inside the house, right? If there's goods for the, to the value of five grand in there, yeah. I, I will eat my hat. Yeah. My uh, my son will let you in. Right, I'm okay. The okay. Five grand with the stuff that you can live with. Okay, no problem. I'll have a look round and then I'll ring you back, Mark. All right, thank mm. you. With £5,000 appearing to be Mark's best <laughs> offer, Stuart and Ian must now look for assets inside the house to help offset at least oh, part of the debt. Yeah. Okay, outside Fort Knox. Cheers. Hello. All right, no worries. But they're in for a shock. God, Lee, this month dry. I guarantee you, he probably put everything in storage. The house is almost completely empty. I don't feel the cupboards are empty. Stuart Ooh. goes to check upstairs, <laughs> and he's in for another surprise. Are you Karen? Yeah. I know it must be a stressful time, but the writs in, in your name as well. There's literally there's nothing that you or Mark can do at all. Yeah. yeah. He's he's offered a payment of five thousand, but it's not it's not going to be nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's four hundred and three thousand pounds at the moment. I'll I'll come back in a minute, obviously, yeah, but I'm just going to carry on doing inventory of the house. All right. And I, you know what? They're not down bad. They still got this nice house. It don't give. It don't matter if it's a bed and three cups in that mug. They still got it. <laughs> and the power is on. No, looks yeah. like they've lost everything. When we do come across a defendant that has done very well and is quite wealthy, the stakes are a lot higher for them. They've got a lot more to lose, and it only takes one bad decision to land yourself in hundreds of thousand pounds worth of debt. Stuart and Ian have been at the property for half an hour. Mark hasn't called back to increase his £5,000 offer. The statue yeah. that's in the first room on the right-hand side. So Stuart and Ian start an inventory of the few assets of value in the house. Two memorabilia shirts. It's Canton now, this one as well. Yeah. The two signed Manchester United football shirts should fetch a few hundred pounds at auction. Mm. Manchester United versus Liverpool right now. Yeah, I recorded this the day before. But there seem to be few assets of any value. Even the cars outside are of limited worth. But as the claimant has instructed that everything of any value should be removed, they're added to the inventory. Brother, this got a crack block. <laughs> a good intake manifold, something going on. Stuart calls the office with an Ask update. It. We're just at this property now. It's more or less empty, Gary. But then he hears some surprising news. Yeah, no problem, Gary. I'll speak to you shortly. It seems that the claimant has asked for a £25,000 down payment today to call off the removal. 25 bands. Stuart calls Mark again. Hi, Mark. Right, um... Claimant wants at least 25. We, I mean, it's just ridiculous. He thinks we've got other properties we don't. But on the other side of it, though, Mark, you you are living in one of the most prestigious places in the country. There's a fucking massive mortgage on there. Yeah. I'm barely keeping up with, uh, and, and yeah. there's no equity in it. Well. Okay, Mark, the city short. That's a lie. It's clear that Mark can't find the 25,000 pounds needed to stop yeah, recovery equity, today. Sure. Stewart calls the office again. They haven't got it. They're, they're claiming that they haven't got it. The claimant agrees to give the family some more time to raise the cash. Stuart calls Mark back. Right. They're willing to accept the control goods agreement, which means that everything stays here for 48 hours. That's just no good to me. We've got no chance of paying this money back in 48 years, let alone 48 hours. Right. Um, so we can have our busted-up cars and our rubbish furniture, and he can do a statutory man if he wants. 
That'd be great if saved me 1,200 quid the cost of me going bankrupt. He thinks I've got the 25 grand lying round. Fuck mm. me, who's got 25 grand lying round? It's clear, Stu- A lot of people who look- <laughs> Trappers. <laughs> Stuart and Ian have found themselves in the middle of a bitter dispute. With both sides refusing to back down, and with very few assets to use as leverage, Stuart will have to use all of his skills and experience to get this highly charged case resolved. It's not that highly charged, okay. It's just like impossible. <laughs> I refuse to get a recap. I just watched it. Now, whatever the rights or wrongs of the situation, Stuart is duty bound to get some kind of result for the claimant. It's clear Mark won't pay the £25,000 needed to stop recovery today. So Stuart updates Karen on what they intend to take. The two vehicles are going. The desk in the office, the wall clock, the sound bar, the lamp that's in the hallway, the side table, the actual safe, the TV downstairs, the cinema system, the TV that's in that second bedroom there, the signed football shirts. So that's where, where I'm up to at the moment. Everything. I can't begin to tell you what the stress it's caused. My husband, to be honest, has been on the edge, but I can't say how long yeah. we've been fighting this. There's only so much you can take, isn't there? Yeah, yeah there's only so much you can take. Take it, take it, because... What can you do? You've got a shit job. I'm not gonna lie, this part is, you know what I mean? Usually it comes to some sort of arrangement, but very rarely it comes to this point, and it's... So that's the plan going forward, then? Jarvis Alice has, but... Since he left us in the mess that we're in it. Yeah. Right, I'll ring recovery. Stuart heads downstairs to call for recovery. Got no choice. Got the um, football frames. Right, I've got to take them off for one now. Come on. Stuart and Ian begin to stack the items by the front door. You do mobilisation, mate. I'll see a notice on that one. Okay. It can be extremely difficult when we're dealing with a bit of dispute. Because I the know they rich, but golly, they got nothing. Fandon doesn't want to pay. They're not rich, I'm sorry. I know they live in a nice neighborhood and with a nice house, but they got nothing. Claimants. Skin. And then we'll have to remove goods. We can't use any of his goods as leverage because he wants us to take it anyway. So we're in between a rock and a hard place. An hour later, a low loader arrives to remove the cars. Dang. Minutes Dang. later, another van. recovery vehicle arrives to take away the household assets. Right, turn the lights off. They're taking the light fixtures up. Despite the claimant's request to remove as much as they can, Stuart and Ian must ensure the family have enough furniture and goods to maintain a decent standard of living. And we'll stick these chairs back around the kitchen table. I think that's everything yeah. done on that side. They didn't. I know they're leaving stuff for them, like beds and things to sit out, but they taking light fixtures. I ain't never seen them take a light fixture. But the strain of the situation has pushed the family to their limits. Do you like some cake in your house? No, 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 not at all. No, no, I understand, mate. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, but... Well, you're really getting stressed now. I'm going to phone the police. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are the police going to do? What are the police going to do? Me. We're going in a minute. We're going in a minute. You've hassled me. You've hassled me for hours. I understand it's stressful, all right? But I'm here to do my job. All right? OK. I wouldn't want two High Court Enforcement agents yeah, I told them to walking it. inside my property, but we're cool, we're calm, we're professional. We're there to resolve the situation and diffuse any any worries that people may have. But ultimately, we're there to do our job and we're there to execute that writ. With tempers fraying, Stuart gets the last items loaded and the recovery van leaves. The list of inventory's there. 
It's all broken down of exactly it's been taken control of. And who does the valuation on what, how much it's worth? It's, that's said, the auctioneer's doing that. OK. So everything's stored for seven days. It doesn't get sold now, OK? It is stored, so if you can try and get the sort of the next seven days, you'll be fully entitled to get your stuff back, OK? It's not like we're selling it straight away. It is stored. Right, OK. All right. Yeah. See you later. They're cooked. It's an unfortunate situation, and there's no gamp, there's no reward without risk. And this is a part of being a businessman. I'm pretty sure this dude's a businessman, and he understands that it is what it is right now. <laughs> like they said, a couple wrong moves, and this. It's always rubbish when it gets to that stage, isn't it? But yeah, people aren't going to pay. Good, it? it looks like that uh, the family have had enough of the claimants. Looks like that they're living on the bare means. They're not willing to cooperate, they're not willing to make a payment, so we've had to remove the goods. Take the date. Recent research shows that four out of ten private tenants spend more than 30% of their pay on rent. And parents... It's way more than 30 now. Gotta be. ...are spending £850 million each year to help their young adult children pay for accommodation. One in five people who contacted a leading debt charity to seek help with rent areas arrears in 2016 were aged between 25 and 39. High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in Ashford, Kent, to recover a debt of over £11,000 owed in unpaid rent. Our next customer is a Kerry Marden. Okay. Her and Shane Marden owe £11,133.42. Oof. The case began 18 months ago when Kerry and Shane's former landlord took the couple to court over the rent arrears. Both agreed to pay the landlord back in instalments, but now Kerry has defaulted. Shane Marden has been paying £15 every two weeks. As far as I understand, Kerry Marden has paid nothing. Kerry and Shane have since split up, and Gary has tried unsuccessfully to get payment from Kerry on a previous visit. Now, I've met this girl before. Now Gary and Connor are on their way back to Why see her again, like to get this case resolved for good. It's actually Shane that told us her new address. So he's not happy the fact that he's paying and she's not? No. Of course not. Good shout, that man. As they arrive, they spot someone at the window with a smartphone. Oh, they're already recording he's already us. recording us, watch, walking up. Oh, can I speak to Kerry, please? She's not here. Can uh, we get her on the phone? Huh? Can we get her on the phone? I'll get her on the phone. But I mean, what's, what is it? Show us some money. Now, this, I think, is about to get negative. I'll be winning that. All right. While the man, Kerry's new boyfriend, Steve, gets... Yeah, that's the energy I felt. New boyfriend energy. It's going to get... He's going to escalate. They're the on the phone. Gary takes the opportunity to make peaceful access into the house, something the writ allows him to do. They're in the house. They've just come in the house. I didn't let them in. They've just walked in the house. Can I speak to her? Yeah. She's not told you anything about this. I don't this, know anything about this. Hi, Kerry. It's Gary Brown. Do you remember I came to your house about this debt? No. There's still... Eleven thousand pound that's owed. He's he's paying some money, but it's not he's not responsible for all of it. Um, the situation is we're here to try and set up an a, an arrangement. Yeah. Or remove goods from the premises. I've just moved in there. Do you know how bad that looks? Well, this needs to be this needs to be sorted. You've brought this on yourself, Kerry. Okay, you said you're trying to. What 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 efforts have you made to sort this in the last year and a half? None. I'll pass you back to Steve. Hello? What's all this? Hello? 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 Hello?
it's 11 grand. But I mean, hang on a minute, Perry. I'll, just, I'll, I'll, just, I'll be sitting here watching TV, not knowing nothing about it all. And they just rocked up here now, so. It's quite a common thing to see. Yeah, nah, bro, it's, you should, it, you should disclose all your debts. And, like, this is a relationship at this point. I got to know it all, because if they come to my door with that nonsense, I need to know, right? Debts being hidden from, from partners. And I think it's because of embarrassment sometimes, bringing up the past. Obviously, there's going to be a few words and a conversation to be had between the two of them once we're out of there. But first and foremost, the debt needs to be paid. Five minutes later, Kerry is back on the phone. Hi, Kerry. Hello. Um, how much could you come up with today? I don't know. How much? Um, we normally ask for about for half of the money, which oh. is yeah, which is five and a half grand. Right. If you can come up with five and a half grand, um, then I think that would be reasonable, and then we'll do an arrangement for for the rest. I think you are reaching for the sky, buddy. You reaching for the moon. All right, fine. Gary well, and Connor really give Kerry it. some time to try and raise some funds, but it's clear that Steve is still in shock about the agent's visit. It's a nice area around here. I don't need this on my doorstep. No, no. Do you know what I mean? I know you're doing your job. Do you know what I mean? I ain't got a problem with that. Steve, you know I, mean? I completely sympathise with you, mate. Yeah, this is. Hello? Kerry calls again. Uh, uh, I just want to speak to you. Hello? Hi. My granddad said he can write me a cheque for 6000 to give to you now, if that's okay. We can't take checks because it's not cleared funds, I'm afraid. We can take debit or credit card. If, you, if your granddad's got... They can take credit card, but they can't take checks. It's not acceptable no more. He's got a bank card. OK. Because it's for that amount of money, it would need to go to the office um, for them to take the money. So I'll ring the office now then and tell them to expect a phone call. OK. How much are you offering monthly? A hundred. A hundred a month or a hundred a week? It right. is what it is. Six thousand a hundred a month, that's doable, it gotta be. Right. Kerry's granddad has offered over half of the debt as a down payment. It's a surprise W granddad his result, but the situation is clearly taking its toll. She sounds really upset. Yeah, and yeah, I, I mean I know what it is. Well, I she's mean, put herself in this situation. Because it's not that the money's owed, I reckon it's more embarrassing thing, isn't it? Because I am often a bit embarrassed. Like, I guarantee no one will actually come up to me and say, well, what was all that about? People have made, it's Chinese whispers. Before you know it, I'm Fred West or saying, and you found bodies in the garden. <laughs> 30 minutes later, Gary rings the office to check the money has been transferred. Raining like a month. Hi, Jane. Has that gone through or is it um, just... Oh, God, OK. It seems that the payment has been declined. Gary calls Kerry. You gotta call the bank. Hello? Hello. It got declined because my grandfather didn't realise that it, it was only 4000 in the bank. Right. Um, I know it's not your... We'll try four. For you didn't know what was in your granddad's and account. Hundred. But I've been here for two hours now. Well, which... I like I'm not offering to pay you nothing. Kerry says her granddad can pay £4,000 right now, but it's not the six she offered. Whilst they wait to hear if she can raise the rest of the money, Gary and Connor start an inventory of goods they could seize to offer. That is creepy. Set the balance. Feels like real gold. It's heavy. But then Kerry arrives, and Gary is in for an unexpected surprise. I didn't know you were pregnant when I was, you know, when we were just talking about it earlier. I'm going to help you out, right? If it's your granddad can pay the four thousand yeah. pound now, we'll leave. Yeah. Each situation is different, and everybody's yeah, the situation has just got crazy. She walked in pregnant. This is a high stress thing. I got a baby. <laughs> I understand what pregnancy does to a woman. I, I, uh, we're done. Four is good enough. <laughs> different to the next, so. I try not to look at things and make judgment before I actually speak to people because it's very easy to do that and if somebody's pregnant then you really have to change the angle that you're coming at.
Kerry's granddad's payment of £4,000 goes through. And Kerry has now promised to get the other £2,000 by the end of the day. <coughs> Gary draws up the arrangement. £4,000 paid now, £2,000 paid by 5pm today, and then £100 a month starting 1st of April. Finally, yeah, the case like is that. resolved for now. That's it. Stick to the arrangement that way. We don't need to come back. Well, okay. we'll leave you in peace anyway. Take care, guys. Okay, thank you. See you later. See you later. It's been a surprising result for Gary and Connor. I think the client would be, would be happy with this. Nice little village like this in the middle of Kent. The last thing anybody wants is oh, enforcement Kent. agents knocking on doors. Because it's, it's pretty much obvious what we are and who we are, what we're doing. And we're not exactly a bag of crisps, are we? Bag of crisps? Yeah, we're not small, we're not discreet. <laughs> Faced with a delicate situation, Gary and Connor got a good result. But in Stuart and Vic's next case... Research has revealed contributing to wage growth. Rising cost of living are major factors contributing to escalating levels of personal debt in the UK. Over the past decade, more than 50% of Britons have seen an increase in their living costs, whilst a quarter of people claim their income has stalled completely or even fallen. In 2017, the average debt of people aged over 16 in the UK rose to 28,000. Wow. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Presswich, Lancashire. They have a writ to collect a debt of almost £1,800 owed in unpaid parking fines by Graham Morris. Stuart has some details of the car Mr Morris drives. So tell me about Mr Morris. Mr Morris, he's got a Mercedes CL500 outside. It's an old one. Mr. Morris, an accountant, incurred the fines after parking his Mercedes without buying a valid ticket. That's his fault. Here it is, this one here. That was like multiple times. He had too. been paying off the debt by instalments, but he's defaulted. Now he must pay back the money he owes in full today. Can I have it? Are we making excuses for this Hello, guy? Hello, Mr. No? Morris. My name is Mr. McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Here with a High Court writ, sir. The total amount of £1,762. Able to make payments. If not, we are instructed to remove goods, sir. I don't have the money at the moment. Right, OK. The total balance at the moment is £1,762.84. No, it's not. It's £1,000. You stuck 600 quid on costs. At the moment, sir. You that's stuck right. 600 quid on costs. That's right. At the moment, how, sir. How do you justify 600 quid on a £1,000 debt? Well, that's something you need to take up the court, sir, not with us. So you can go around in circles with us all day long. It's not going to change the situation, sir. Unless the balance is paid, we're here to remove the goods. Here's your copy, sir. I'll give you a copy of your paperwork, sir. Don't you you fucking grab things off like that. You grabbed it, sir. With the door open, Stuart takes the opportunity to make peaceful entry into How the house. How even get behind him? Stuart is elusive, ain't he? Pound this debt off for £100 a week. Right. You know what's going on. OK, so the claim... Don't, the don't claimant, act stupid. I'm not acting stupid at Yes, all, you know, sorry. most of this debt has been paid off. Right. This is an outstanding balance then, sir. So what we're here to do now, sir, is to collect the balance. If not, we're instructed if to remove balance is, If the balance is paid... In full, I don't have the money. Right. Let, well, let me just explain, sir. I it's... don't have the money. All right. Right, I've had to close my fucking office down. Mm -hmm. Right, and I've had to lay staff off. Mm -hmm. I don't have the money. Okay. You have been making payments to water, though. Yes, I have. Why have you stopped? I've got no money coming in. I'm due money in this week. That's for somebody that's owed me money for eight months. Yeah. And we're going to run your company up and I was going to offer them 300 quid and then start making payments again. I owe money on North West Water and I'm paying them off at £100. And there's a limit. There's a limit to what I can do. Yeah. It's clear that Mr Morris is facing financial difficulties. But the agents are duty bound to get this case resolved one way or another. Stuart goes to clamp Mr Morris's... Uh.
The good old M class, whatever this is. See you, what is this? Sadie's outside and calls for a vehicle check. We're currently at the property at the moment. We've seized a vehicle, a Mercedes CL500. Could you do HPI on it, please? Bloomberg CL500, auto, yeah, clear finance. The vehicle, I reckon, is worth about 750 quid. That's okay. it? As the car appears to be worth less than half the value of the debt, the agents will have to look That's crazy. for other assets inside the house to offset the balance. We'll have to remove goods, sir. Then remove the car. Okay, and we'll be removing goods inside the property in the, in the as well. The property so. is all that won't cover the debt and not that vehicle. It's an, of the age. So there'll be cover. goods inside the property as well, so and if we do Well, do this that, is rented property. It's owned by my sister. Right. What about the goods, sir? I'm going to get my sister down, it's her property. Yeah, if you haven't got any evidence to prove the goods belong to her, then we will be removing no, them, No, you sir. won't. We will be, sir. No, you won't. Yes, we will, sir. No, you won't. It's her property. Right. You keep saying that, sir, but it's not going to stop what we're it's doing. It's got a today. fucking land registry okay, fucking proves it. don't swear at me, sir. I'm not swearing Let, at you. Get off my property. I'm not going anywhere, sir. It's quite frustrating for us when the data doesn't want to play game. I mean, if we're there to resolve the matter or try and work with them, and he's just not interested in even talking to you, it's frustrating because at the end of the day... I ain't gonna lie, me putting myself in a debtor situation, I'd be upset. Even though I, I know it's my problem, I know it's my fault, but I'm still mad. And you the punching bag right now. We know we will get it resolved one way or the other. You know what it is. But before it gets to that stage of removing, we would like to resolve the matter. Mr. Morris calls his sister. Whilst they wait for her to arrive, Stuart starts an inventory. So how long have you rented this house, sir? Seven years. Seven years. And uh, everything in the house was in the house when, when yes. you moved in? Right, even that TV that isn't seven years old, let's be honest. So you're saying that your sister bought that for you? Yeah, I bought that. Right, there we go, sir. So there are goods in here that belong to you. Okay, take the fucking TV. Yeah, there we go, sir. Take the fucking TV. <sighs> Stuart think he just, I mean, he just ate. Do you know what? Because of your attitude, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Mm. I'm not going to pay a penny now. The TV seems... That don't affect him. ...seems to be the only asset inside worth seizing. But then Stuart spots something. That laptop belongs to, uh, to my limited company. OK. OK, so have you got any... Can you just prove that with some documentation, Yeah, the bills so. are at my office. OK, no problem. What we'll do is we'll get it removed today. It is then stored. That belongs. Don't touch me. That belongs to. That belongs to the limited company. Touch me again, sir. That belongs to the limited company. Touch me again, sir. I'll ring the police, That's and you'll fine. be arrested. Ring the fucking police. With Mr. Morris in direct conflict with Stuart, the case has taken a nasty turn. It's taken an appropriate turn, a negative turn, which is what we are here for. Stuart must <coughs> make Mr. Morris understand that the laptop will be seized unless he can provide proof it belongs to his company. But he's not backing down. This will be removed. It's been removed at the moment, sir. Don't try and obstruct me doing my job, sir. That belongs to my limited company. You will have time to, to get documentation together, that's fine. So I'm going to do now, so I'm going to secure this in the van to believe that you try and take it and try and hide it, OK? That's fucking outrageous. The defendants use tactics that are aggressive. I had a whole two liter of Diet Coke. At least it was abusive. Diet. It just makes us more determined and uh, it doesn't throw us off the scent. It keeps us tracked on exactly what we want to do. It makes us even more determined to get a result. The agents have been in the house for 20 minutes when Mr. Morris's sister, Fiona, arrives. Morning. Morning. He's in there. Good morning. You got the haircut? I told them it's your property and I told them it's the contents belong to you and they need proof. Can I discuss the case with your sister? Yes, sir? you can. Right. Because the gentleman was on a payment plan but he stopped paying. And now we instructed to collect the full outstanding balance. The vehicle has been seized outside and that won't cover the debt. So we'll have to remove goods from the property. Everything here belongs to me. Well, that TV doesn't. We've already established that, so I'm not going to go around in circles. I want to talk to my brother on my own. Yeah, sure, yeah, but we won't be leaving the property. We'll go in a different room, but we'll have to stay in the property. Yeah, yeah, of course, okay. not a problem. 
sometimes defendants get themselves into she gonna pay a mess, a financial mess, maybe a business venture that's gone wrong due to no fault of their own. It's they find themselves calm. in a situation where we're on their doorstep. Nine times out of ten, it's usually parents or brothers and sisters that actually help the person that's in distress, which is which is a good thing to see. I, will, I want to get to a point where I can help my family, where we all have no issues financially. That's that's the goal, man. No Minutes debt. later, the yeah. debtor's sister wants to start negotiating. Is there a, a certain amount that could be given today to give my brother an opportunity? It needs to be paid in full. He's been no, on a it doesn't, Stuart. Oh, and maybe. He's broken it, so that's why the client wants the money all. And how long are you prepared to give? It's ten past seven now. As a gesture of goodwill, we'll give it to quarter past eight. And that's us being here for nearly two hours. The deadline has been set. If the money can't be raised in full in the next hour, Mr. Morris's assets will be seized. I'm leaving the property to do something and then I'm going to come back. Okay, no problem. Do you know how long that'll be roughly? Ten past eight, did you say? Yeah. Ten past eight. Yeah. Right. Well, tell me the truth. You're going off to see if you can get yourself the money out for me. With Mr. Morris's sister gone to try and raise some funds, Stuart tries to find out more about the case. Graham, where's the parking from? They're a private parking company that states quite clearly mm. that the first two hours are for free. Yeah. So I used to go there first thing in the morning for coffee, so I never stayed there more than an hour. No. And a lot of times I would turn up before 8 o'clock. It was a ticketing machine, and the machine didn't get turned on till 8. Right. And then they'd slap tickets on. Hmm. But it, it must have been a few times. It, it, 15 tickets. Yeah. I'm going to appeal this. Yeah. Why didn't you stop after the, the first time? It, that's entirely... After the first ticket, it's like, oh, I'm doing something wrong. It's not... It's not adding up. Let me... Let me cut back real quick. Well, your choice. To us, a writ is black and white. Okay, I'm not the judge. You can tell me your story. You can tell me your life story. I can't change anything on that day about the outcome of the writ. It's not going to change anything because the writ is active and it stands and we have to execute it. Five minutes before the deadline expires, Fiona comes back. I'm going to make the payment today. Right. This is a debit card. Okay. Right. okay. Insert your card now. Right, you can just enter your PIN. She offers to pay her brother's debt in full. Let's talk about it afterwards. Right. She don't want to hear your bullshit. Yeah, she knows you're not paying. The card is accepted. And Mr. Morris's debt is cleared by his sister. That's all your paperwork. Keep hold of that. Thanks, sis. That's your laptop. Take the claim off. All right, Graham. We'll be on our way. The agent's perseverance has paid off. <sighs> yeah. Cracking work, mate. Cracking work. I, that was a corny fist bump. I don't like it. I didn't like the fist bump. You, there's no need for celebration. Last year, nearly 30% of people who sought advice from a leading debt charity owed money to family and friends. The average amount owed exceeded £4,500, while the total amount owed has risen by nearly £200 million since 2014. People who contacted the leading debt charity in 2016 owed a total of £433.7 million to families and friends. God dang. High Court Enforcement Agent Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in Havant on the south coast. Miserable way. They in Havant? Whoever they're going to go visit might not have it either. <laughs> Whether? My bad. It's a bad yeah, joke. Say that again. They have a writ to collect just over £8,500 owed by Luke Ferrugia to a friend. I'm going to go and pay a visit to a Mr. Luke. Ferrugia, okay, to collect eight thousand five hundred ninety-one pounds, seventy-one pence. That's a lot of money. 
Mr Ferruzia borrowed the money from the claimant six years ago for a deposit on a house, but failed to pay it back. The six. case was escalated to the High Court, and now Mr Ferruzia must pay the money he owes in full today. Based on the weather, I'm hoping he lets us in. Yeah. I don't want to get my hair wet. Dog's next door. Yeah, I heard a door close. I heard a bang. A dull thud. They be knowing y'all coming, man. I just seen him. I know you're in, mate. I can see you through the window. I can see you through the sheer see through white curtains. Can you come to the door, please? Well, if you if you want to speak to me, I'll explain what this is about. He's coming to the door. I didn't realise you were coming to the door. My name's Gary Brown, this is my colleague Connor Jackson. We're here about a legal matter. This is a High Court writ. Yeah. Can I, yeah. Can I step in the dry? Yeah, that's all right, mate, come here. Do you mind if I get dressed then? Yeah. All right, mate. Big mistake. Let him in. Mr Ferrugia's girlfriend is also at home. Do, were you involved in this as well? Or? Oh, God, no, I've only been with him three years. That You're talking, this, this happened Five, six years ago. Oh wow, okay. A long time ago then. How much it was. he gone for? Um, well he's, he's taken you to court for 6,757. Oh, he didn't even lend me that much. I think it was about 1,500 quid, 2,000 pounds, something like that. Court fees. With Should interest, have went to court, court yeah. costs and legal fees now added, the scale of the debt has clearly come as a shock. We're here to collect 8,597 pounds. Oh, I ain't got eight grand, so I ain't got anything worth eight grand. The money that he's wanting is the money he gave me to pay for the deposit. Ah, okay. Right. So I was living on that. Because I was, I was living on my nans and things. So look, I'm giving you the money and that, you know what I mean, to sort of like help yeah. get started. And so I'll pay you back, mate. Don't worry about it. Really? Did he, he, he said, don't worry about it? Yeah, that's what, honestly. Because I wouldn't say that like, if I'd lent you like six. No, I was. Now Gary needs to get this case resolved one way or another. What do you do for a living? Uh, ground worker labourer. You know what I mean? So I bust my bollocks and I've got no idea this is going on and then you turn up. This writ here orders us to remove goods oh, unless the debt's paid. It's all us stuff. So, so everything. Um, it's in the Argos car, which is all mine. So it's in my finance car, it's my finance. Okay. All of it's mine. He had nothing when I met him. Oh, hey, well, God damn. They finna argue after this. He had nothing when I met him. Well, he already confirmed that he ain't have nothing. Some self employed. And I also don't understand why this pull up bar is here because it don't look like bro did a pull up in the last six years. And that, and I said, majority of this shit in this house is hers. With most of the assets in the house belonging to Luke's girlfriend, Gary changes tactics. I'll be reasonable with you and I'll, I'll give you 15 minutes to make some phone calls, see if somebody can help. I need time, mate. I'm self employed, like I said to Matt, I've literally got. It's not a morning isn't enough time to sort this out. The clock is ticking. Yeah, six years. If Mr. Ferrugia can't raise any funds before the deadline, he stands to lose what little he has. I don't want to recap. I'll be reasonable with you and I'll, I'll give you 15 minutes. Gary and Connor start an inventory of goods. Now, while Luke makes some calls, yeah, Gary right. and Connor start an inventory of goods belonging to him they could seize to offset the debt. Got all these different games down here, all these different consoles, and then there's loads of old ones there. Two boxes of uh, Halo slip limited edition, they're 40 quid each. You got a GameCube? Be a shame to have to take all this stuff. With little of value belonging to Luke inside the house, Connor checks out the garage. Old apartment. Ooh, and motorcycle. finds a motorbike. Worth as much as £500 at auction, That's the agents it? might finally have found an asset worth seizing. Connor checks the license plate online and goes back inside with the news. We have a bit of an issue, guys. The bike is not on finance. No, I forgot I got out alone for what, it. What, uh, motorbike? Way. Mountain bike? Motorbike. It's so, a Yamaha 125, so. With his bike now at risk, Luke has an idea. What, what about you there? 
As a last resort, his girlfriend rings her grandparents. I ain't gonna lie, man. Leaning on your girl for a situation like this is insane. Hi. And I want to say W girl, but I also want to say yes, you're dumb. <laughs> That's not your husband. Hello. Well, it might be. It might. It might not be that bad. That's my granddad to you to lick. That's not good. It's probably just lying in that and he's got me into shit. Oh, on. Which one of you two is in charge? Me. He's in charge. Hello. Hello. Hello there. How much are you able to? A lot. He answered the phone like it was a grand time going on. Probably at three. Three? I mean, that's going to be the best that we're going to be able to do. We've got literally no one else to get any money on. Three, that's half. Work out a playmate play. That is it. Okay. Um, okay, I'll, I'll accept I'll accept £3,000. We'll do an arrangement for the rest. Look at the good, good boy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. The older generation quite often bail out the younger generation, whether it's grandsons, granddaughters. I see it quite a lot. The older generation seem to quite often be those people that people that owe money tend to turn to, whether it's because they are a bit a bit wiser in terms of managing money. I, I would imagine that's got something to do with it. With a lump sum payment of £3,000, Gary now needs to put a payment plan together to clear the rest of the debt. The conversation we need to have now is how much can you pay monthly? I could probably 50 quid and I could probably say safely at the moment that I could probably pay that, but I, I don't want to say I'm going to pay more and then not be able to afford it and then have more shit and then have you come back. That's, that's, that's the smartest thing. Okay. You know what I mean? I Gary even... calls the office to see that's if the logical. client will accept £3,000 today and £50 a month towards the eight. They're going to say 100, but whatever. £8,000 debt. You want it higher than that. Right, okay. Bearing in mind, he, um, the debt is not in work at the minute, or when he does work, it's it's here and there. I can, I can only say what the client is yeah. telling me. All right. Bye. Bye. Luke, um, they've just got hold of the client, yeah. and he said he's not accepting 50 quid a month. He wants more than that. I've busted my ass to give you what I've got now, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking on the edge. I accept that, but that's that's his response. So what's he going to think is a reasonable amount then? Because I could say £100 a month and he could still say no. And I'm not going to stay calm forever. I'm not being horrible. Now you're doing your job, mate. You've been in my house for two hours fucking my shit up. I've got you three grand. I'm not fucking... I'll, I'm not going any more than £100 a month. And that's me just clutching at straws just to get you out of my house now. If he says no to that, then there's nothing. I can't give you no more money. I ain't got nothing else. I ain't got nothing anyway. Gary rings the office with the new offer. Hundred oh, might cool. be okay. doable. Thanks, Gary. It's good news. My boss has said, set it up, and we'll sell it to the client. Just make sure you stick to this because I don't want to come back. I don't want to come back, mate. Print there and sign there, please. This is a right. That's it. Everything's been handled. All right, mate. How we get it sorted? All right. Yeah. Take care. The case is resolved for yeah. now. But if Mr. Ferugia doesn't stick to his payment plan, the agents will be back. Sometimes the client just wants everything in one go, and it's, you can't get blood out of a stone. It's not possible. Well, they, in every... they don't know the situation on the ground, though, do they? They just see it as he owes me this much money, go and get it. Mm. You know, they don't know how people live day to day. No. On to the next one. Doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, they owe too much. They're gonna hold forever. Okay. That's good, that's good. Get them out your hair for, for as long as possible. Tia Lily will like, comment, man, I'm gone.